Hi folks, welcome to our weekly chat about local history. I'm Rob Goller, good to see you back uh, listening to our weekly chats. Um, I appreciate the support of this project. And boy, have we had some pretty crazy weather out there. Um, yesterday we had some flood flooding throughout East Aurora and the surrounding areas through uh, some torrential rain. And of course, this isn't the first time we've had uh, uh, flooding from torrential rain. Uh, posted some photo I will be posting some photos to the uh, Aurora Town Historian uh, Facebook page and Instagram of previous floods uh, that uh, uh, torrential rains that flooded the roads uh, in the village so that's nothing new but the bigger weather related thing we've been talking about is the tornado that touched down uh, in West Falls last week um, there were uh, a uh, few tornadoes confirmed throughout western New York from that uh, storm that occurred last Wednesday. And that has led to some questions about uh, the history of tornadoes in our community. And uh, it was very interesting because I had been researching tornadoes um, in East Aurora, the East Aurora area, um, and I had come across an article about, uh, a, they called them cyclones, small cyclones, uh, back in the early days. And I was researching something else. And in the newspaper, I uh, came across an interesting article about a small cyclone that had hit uh, our area. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And so that led me to do a little more research about uh, uh, tornadoes and uh, cyclones, as they called them, um, uh, throughout the history of, of, of East Aurora. And I did some digital, I searched, searched the digital archives to try to find um, uh, some information and also went into the National Weather Service archives, which I'll talk about in a little bit about how uh, a wonderful resource they have uh, online that you can look um, for weather related uh, history. But um, uh, I started researching, actually started writing it. And of course, with a lot of the articles that I've been working on, I put it on the back burner because something else will come up um, or I get busy with other topics. And I thought, well, one day, um, the plan was just to write about it because it's interesting because we don't get tornadoes here very often, hardly at all. And I thought how interesting it would be to talk about uh, tornadoes uh, and alleged tornadoes in our history. And then last week, uh, the uh, confirmed uh, uh, tornado, verified tornado in West Falls happened and we're all talking about it. And so I switched around uh, what I was um, uh, researching, finishing up an article for my monthly newspaper column. I uh, switched it. Um, because I didn't want to let this opportunity to go by since we're all talking about um, uh, the tornado in, in West Falls. And everybody's okay. And actually, that's quite interesting throughout the history of our community is the tornadoes have not uh, um, uh, resulted in, in um, uh, injuries or deaths, uh, which is, thank goodness, um, there was one storm that wasn't a tornado, but um, that resulted in an unfortunate death. Uh, but for the uh, for, uh, verified tornadoes, we have been uh, very fortunate. Um, and uh, so I, I did, I continued my research after, uh, quickly did some uh, updates, made sure my, uh, my research was updated, uh, but most of it had already been done. So I thought that was quite interesting. And I talked to the editor of the Easter Advertiser and she agreed that I could switch my topic. And so that will be published coming up in the Advertiser. So I encourage you to, uh, to uh, buy a copy, uh, seek it out. Um, and I won't give away too many of the details because I'd love for you to read the actually read the article. Uh, but um, I did find some interesting things and to sim simply answer the question that I was receiving and I was talking to people about as we were talking about the tornado in, in West Falls is uh, no, we have uh, tornadoes are super rare. <laughs> we do not have them here. In fact, uh, the National Weather Service has not kept track of tornado they have kept track of tornadoes in the modern way that we do since 1950 uh, and since 1950 so assigning a severity uh, on the scale uh, tracking the path confirming them through uh, through the destruction that was left behind um, and the witness accounts they actually confirm the tornadoes and that's what you heard last week where it took a, a day or two for um, them to confirm the tornado in West Falls, and it took a little bit for them to confirm the others in Western New York, because what they were doing is confirming that, yes, indeed, it was a tornado and that the damage was uh, represented uh, a tornado, not just straight line winds. Um, and, and of course, they use witness accounts as well. Since 1950, the town of Aurora has not had a confirmed tornado. 
uh, there's been a couple in Holland. There was one in Wales that went into the in uh, went into uh, uh, Wyoming County, and then of course there's one we remember in 2017 that um, hit the fairgrounds just before the fair and uh, went into Orchard Park. But the town of Aurora has not had a confirmed uh, a tornado uh, since 1950. So that just tells you how rare last week's tornado in West Falls was. So yes, it was uh, unprecedented. Uh, a lot of times we talk about the weather. Um, we talked about previously um, uh, when we have uh, bad uh, uh, snowstorms and blizzards, uh, the November storms, and people throw the word unprecedented out there. And one of the fun jobs that I have and a lot of historians have is to go back and say, no, this this happened before. Uh, some of the, the severe uh, winter weather, some of the severe uh, weather of any sort might be happening more often today, but uh, the storms aren't necessarily unprecedented. And in fact, we've had November storms before and we've talked about that before. But in this case, um, the tornadoes are very rare and we have not had a confirmed tornado before last week's in Westfall. So that just puts it in perspective, unlike other things where we find previous um, uh, examples of severe weather. In this case, uh, since 1950, when they started keeping track of these things, um, we have not had one touchdown in, in, uh, in, West, in the town of Aurora, which West Falls is a part of. Um, so it really was unprecedented last week. So at, when people we say that, it, it, it is true. Now, before 1950, um, I went back through the newspaper articles and I actually did a digital search of tornado and cyclone and, and the words that they were using. And I found um, several actually. Um, and uh, they um, describe them in different ways. And in some cases, uh, I find in the history books, someone will mention the, the tornado of uh, 1920, for instance. Well, um, in, they'll reminisce about the storm that says, you know, they would call it the tornado. But when you go back into the newspapers uh, records, you'll either find that they didn't describe it that way. They never even used the word tornado to describe it or the, the description of the storm. And some of these old newspapers are great. They offer really, really detailed uh, descriptions of uh, the storm and the damage and the impact. Um, we don't really get that a lot today. Um, uh, unfortunately, oh, but in the days before pictures, photographs that could be published, the the uh, reporter had to actually paint the picture. And so I think sometimes they, they made an extra effort to offer the details in the actual newspaper article, which is very interesting. Um, so uh, some of the storms uh, that I outline in the article that I hope you'll read this week um, uh, weren't necessarily tornadoes, and they probably wouldn't meet the modern day um, uh, example of a tornado. Um, and, but later on, people would refer to it as the tornado of such and such a year, even though it probably wasn't one. Similar things happen with like uh, the blizzards. There's a specific, talk to anybody who's into meteorology, a meteorologist, there is a specific definition for blizzard, and there's a specific definition for tornado. And like last week, they had to prove that it met those qualifications for a tornado. Uh, but sometimes they'll, you know, we'll talk about a blizzard in the past. When you go back and look, it wasn't a blizzard. So sometimes that's what happened, where a tornado wasn't necessarily a tornado um, uh, back when it would actually happen and when you actually read the newspaper accounts. But I talk about it because um, if it had that description over the years, there was a reason why someone gave it that description. Um, so we've had a few of those. There were actually um, uh, some that were just a windstorm. Actually, the one death that I found, uh, unfortunately, this um, young boy in uh, Wales passed away during a, a, what one of the, they called it a tornado-like storm. Uh, but there was no confirmation that it was an actual tornado. Um, but all the rest of the storms, uh, the uh, uh, tornadoes, alleged tornadoes, um, uh, we have been very fortunate that we have not lost, has not been injuries or loss of life um, associated with those storms. So um, uh, uh, that was one question someone asked me if we had ever had a storm that was severe enough, a, a blizzard where we had loss of life and uh, not a blizzard, excuse me, a tornado. Um, and we have not. Uh, we did have a bad wind storm. Um, as far as I can find, I'm, again, I'm uh, uh, glad to be proven wrong if anyone remembers a storm, um, a tornado that we did have an, an unfortunate loss of life or injury. Um, 
So we had several. There were a couple in the 1930s. There was actually, uh, they called it a twister uh, in the 1930s where it went down uh, Route 20A outside of Wales, or outside of East Aurora, between East, the village of East Aurora and Wales Center. It actually took out some cabins, all the cabins of a campground and toppled them into the uh, um, into route, what is today Route 20A. Um, again, detailed accounts in the newspaper. Uh, uh, barn roofs were um, taken off. Um, one of, uh, and that was in the 1930s, there was one in 1920 that was called the Ebenezer, um, uh, um, the Ebenezer Tornado because it actually hit that, uh, probably from the descriptions, there was a tornado in uh, the hamlet of Ebenezer, which is up in West Seneca. And uh, that sounded like a tornado being from a, a layman who doesn't know anything about this, but um, uh, there was a straight path um, and the descriptions made it sound like a tornado. And for years, they called it the Ebenezer tornado. However, a lot of the destruction that happened in the towns around it were not associated with that tornado. A lot of it was from the floods. Um, there was a bridge that was taken out in um, Alma. Um, they blamed it on the tornado, but it probably was more from, uh, it could have been from the, um, uh, the flooding. Um, so, but the whole storm got lumped in um, uh, to, to uh, uh, to the, under the term tornado, the Ebenezer tornado. So um, the destruction that happened in East Aurora, which was minimal, uh, was not from a tornado. It was just from the thunderstorms that came through and the uh, and the washed out bridges. So there were bridges that were washed out, but it had nothing to do with the tornado. Um, and actually there were stories of people being stranded because they couldn't get across the creek anymore and they had to stay at people's farmhouses during this storm. But um, so the, the tornado perhaps was in Ebenezer, but here we got hit by the thunderstorms, which is interesting. One of the questions that I got was whether the village of East Aurora has ever been hit by a tornado. And there's one case that I can find that um, uh, probably qualifies, and it occurred on July 22nd, 1897, pretty close to the anniversary of what we're dealing of uh, our time period now. Um, and they called it a small cyclone, and it actually started... Uh, the description of it in the paper, and again, the newspaper, the Easter Advertiser, had a very detailed description because they didn't have any photographs of it. Um, and it started at the northwest corner of the village. Uh, there was a pine grove, uh, probably it's, it's at the edge of the village, uh, down by the west end, and it was owned by Cicero Hamlin and his, his, his horse farm. Um, and it, it cleared a path through there, just dis destroyed a large portion of the pine grove. And the description was that they were twisted, uh, the, the pine trees. And uh, it the, the was interesting, they talked about the people, our human nature has not changed, that people gawked for days going over there to see the destruction um, because they wanted to, people were talking about it and they wanted to go see it in person. So that curiosity has not changed in, in more than 100, nearly 130 years. Um, the path they described the path went uh, along toward uh, the foot of Maple Street Hill, Maple Road Hill, where there was a couple riding in a in a in a horse carriage. The horse carriage got toppled. The horse got toppled. The couple got toppled. They were fine, and then it continued on, took down a chimney and destroyed a couple other things along North Grove Street uh, as it went up where North Street is today, and followed the path there, and then it. Uh, uh, went up toward North Grove and then it picked up uh, the, on the Pratt farm. It did some damage. And of course we know where Pratt street is today, Pratt and green. That would be where the, their farm was. And then it took some um, uh, parts of buildings and, and uh, they were blown all the way to the railroad tracks. And that was the description that they had in the newspaper. So the path of that sounds like a tornado. Um, again, before 1950, they didn't confirm any of these tornadoes. So it's hard to tell for sure. Um, so you just have to go uh, um, from the details in the uh, in the newspaper account. So I would say that would probably be if any if there's any storm that meets the criteria that would be it. Um, but again, that's 1897, and I couldn't find any other storm that uh, came close to the village that met the criteria for a twister or a cyclone. Um, some and again outlined in the in the article this week. Um, in Strikersville, there were some. There was uh, one that came through Williston that was described as a uh, as a uh, tornado, um, but nothing uh, other than that 1897 storm um, that uh, hit in the village of East Aurora. Now, since 1950, 
the confirmed tornadoes, there was one in the 1960s in the town of Holland. Um, there was one in uh, 2017, that was the one that came through the Erie, uh, there was one that came through the Erie County Fairgrounds and went into Chestnut Ridge Park. Uh, and then as part of that same system, there was a separate tornado that hit the town of Holland, went across Route 16, did some damage to uh, trees. Um, and then there was a bigger one in the 1970s that started in the town of Wales and went into uh, Wyoming County. And it was a pretty long path. It was actually a relatively long path that went uh, up past Berrysburg. And that one did, uh, um, that was a much more severe storm, a longer storm, longer tornado. And it did, uh, it actually took the roof off of a, a house um, and barns were just destroyed. And there was actually a great description in the Easter Advertiser from a witness who went into his basement and then looked out and saw his two car garage being lifted and taken away um, as he went into his basement and then the roof came off of his house. Um, so I detail that in the article as well because I found that was very interesting. That was probably the most severe storm in our area, the severe tornado. So um, uh, Aurora hadn't before last week not had a confirmed tornado since 1950. And in the towns that are immediately adjacent to us, we've only had four that I've counted. And the reason that we know this is because the, uh, uh, and I'll put links to them, but the National Weather Service and NOAA, the, the uh, uh, federal agency, they have a great website where I just Googled and said, uh, uh, tornado, confirmed tornadoes in New York State. And they have since 1950. And actually the Democrat and Chronicle, the newspaper out of Rochester has a great map as well uh, of all the confirmed tornadoes. You can actually uh, click on the, the map and the uh, and the little icons on the map and it'll give you all the details it'll give you official reports so i'll put links to those in case you're interested in tornadoes not just here in the east aurora area but elsewhere um very interesting um uh details uh, official reports if they have them um they tell you what category the, the the tornado was so it tells you all the confirmed tornadoes so that's how i know that's how i was able to find out when and where these happened since 1950. um and then what I did is I took those those dates and the official reports, and then I uh, went back and looked in the newspapers for those dates to find more uh, of the coverage, see if there were photographs, see if there was coverage of that. Of course, before 1950, I don't have that, so I had to rely on the digital search. Um, so I do think I might have missed a couple um, that may have been um, uh, qualified. But again, they're super rare even before, not even... Uh, alleged tornadoes that were not necessarily confirmed, those are very rare. So the uh, uh, calling storms, twisters, cyclones, tornadoes was even rare before 1950. So to answer the question simply, what happened last week in West Falls is, is truly rare, very, very rare. Um, we often call things rare or unprecedented, but this truly, uh, what happened in West Falls last week, um, was uh, uh, does qualify, in my opinion, as historically rare. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's not an exaggeration to call it that. So um, from all the reports. Um, so uh, I will put links to those great websites in there uh, that will, um, it's in there uh, that will, um, if you want to do more investigating of your own, more research about the history of tornadoes. And again, I invite you to um, uh, pick up the advertiser uh, the upcoming advertiser to read um, uh, all I have to say and all the research that I did into into tornadoes in our area. Again, thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, tuning in each week. More and more people are clicking and, and sending in comments and questions. I think that's wonderful and I'm very um, pleased with that and I, I'm glad people are actually listening. Uh, again, I'm Rob Goller. I am the town and village historian here in East Aurora, but these videos and a lot of my research are separate. So Anything I'm uh, talking about here is not part of my official duties as town and village historian. Again, pop comments in the comment section or send me a private message. And it's, as always, thank you for keeping history alive. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.